Yo, what's up, kings and queens? Welcome back to Kenny's channel. And we're going to do a part two. How to add your second preset. And if you saw the thumbnail, how to print borderless. So, we're actually going to be setting up. Do the print. Make sure you got to have your print drivers. Download it. So, when I take you through the steps, if that is missing, then you will have to go to epson.com backslash support, find your printer, download those recommended drivers, and you can also rewind the video. That way, you can copy these settings. And we're going to be applying these settings to heat transfer paper. All right, hoping everybody's having a wonderful day. So we're going to be doing also a quick review. So this is the heat transfer paper um, video that I did. So if you can get a good close. It's been like washed three times and, and dried in the dryer. This wasn't hang dried. This pretty much got washed like somebody will wash clothes so you got to keep in mind everybody's gonna wash your clothes different so i threw this in the dryer this one right here this this is the real one the first one with the cartoon so it kind of give it a vintage look after the wash i mean it, it's not peeling it's holding up the ppd I have to say is official again. This was washed regular, like regular clothes. Was the hang dried. So this is three washes along with the white shirt. Real quick, the holographic vinyl sublimation. I mean, probably can iron it out, flatten it out, but this been washed regular too in the dryer. And probably the customer, if you sold this product, you know what I'm saying? I do apologize, but now I did a video about sublimation. This is an option, but I don't know. This is kind of suspect. So you're going to have to treat it like regular vinyl, my opinion. You know, just cut up your little typography design or whatever you're going to do. So I don't know. And this has been ran, dried. It's been washed too. And I actually got a compliment, compliment on the shirt before the wash. After I done the video. But still, like, see, the, it's not cracking. It's just wrinkled. And not too sure. I mean, of course the heat press and can flatten it out but it's a guarantee because wash and dry you gotta remember everybody doesn't treat their garments in a specific way or turn them inside out things of that nature so just keep all that in mind but the PPD um it's official three washes through the dryer three times through the dryer not peeling and it's all about cutting so that will be a another tutorial coming up, a print and cut using heat transfer paper. So I'm on Silhouette Studio. I got it zoomed in. Okay, I already dragged and dropped two pictures, just like I did in the heat transfer paper video. All right, I stretched them out. It's a very thin, faint line where the mouse cursor is at. All right. And we're just going to act like we're doing heat transfer paper just to print it out. We want the maximum size. We want no print border. This is the print border. Okay. I just clicked on it. There is none. You see that? There is none. So what I'm going to do, place that on there. Make sure okay so machine none cutting mat none 
medium size none, whatever document size you have, eight and a half by 11, eight and a half on the width, 11, 11 by 17, or 13 by 19, the straight media to cut and mat, uncheck that. Keep it portrait, okay? If you start clicking around here, you know, the software sometimes is not user friendly. So if you gotta turn the picture, there's an anchor. When you click on this, there's that anchor right there. You can turn it with your mouse. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna show you. We're gonna go to print. So click on print. Okay, you see very thin white line right there. Okay, this is if you want that block picture on the heat transfer paper, or you can still apply this to your sublimation paper. Okay, for sublimation, you can, you can go either way. So we're adding the second preset. Okay, instead of doing it everything manually, we're going to add the second preset, print it out. So now we're going to hit print. Pick your printer, find your printer. All right, this is how you scroll. Find your printer. Click preferences. This is what you need. If your print preferences does not look like this, I'll leave the link down in the comments. I'll pin it up. You need to watch the video, Epson Equal Tank and Workforce Print and Preferences Settings. That way you can download the recommended drivers and you'll be able to pull this up for next time. And then you can watch this video to add your first preset. You can watch that one and then come back here and you add your second preset. So if you're doing heat transfer paper, I need you to copy these settings. So first, you pick your paper source, right? If you're doing sublimation, you can do pick the tray. Pick your document size, right? Eight and a half by 11, seven by 17, and then should be a 13 by 19 somewhere. I think it's one of these weird alpha four numbers. For paper type, heat transfer paper will be high quality plain paper right here if you're excuse me let me rewind if you're doing sublimation we want the paper tray okay if you have the workforce if you have the equal tank that's you know irrelevant unless you got the um the 150,000 one anyways once you click the paper tray for sublimation you want the premium Presentation paper mat settings, okay? For sublimation only, A, your A subs, whatever sublimation paper you use, okay? You click on that. For those that's doing the heat transfer paper, select your proper tray. Workforce will be cassette two. Paper type, high quality plain paper. Quality is high. Make sure the color's on. You can do a print preview, it's optional, okay? Once you do that, click on this tab, more options. Your document size should match up on the first tab, okay? 1117 here, you'll see 1117 there. Output, this right here is grayed out. Just wanna be clear, this right here is grayed out. The reason why it's grayed out is because you check borderless. That's what you want. You want nothing. You want the biggest picture you can get. So this is grayed out. Color corrections. You know, everything is optional. Um, I will recommend for you to test this out, but you want it on custom, click advanced. Click ICM. If you want decent colors, you're ready to print. If not, color controls. I use Epson Vivid. You know, some people use Adobe RGB. And 
uh, if you're familiar with those settings, you're more than welcome to go to those settings and set the, everything up. I use Epson Vivid. I click the slide bar. So if you if you see this, but if you click the slide bar, because I never really don't remember moving that over there. Because what I did is click the slide bar, and this is how I made my changes. So I'm assuming that when I did the slide bar, I went positive two for cyan, negative 20 for magenta, negative 15 for yellow, which probably means the same thing as this right here is the density. So less density, brighter colors, more density, vice versa. So the density is like how dark you want your colors. So that's what that means. It may be di different terminology for that. Anyways, just click the slide bar. Use these settings right here. This is what I what I use. Um, I got some good comments off this, so you know you, you're more than welcome to play around with this section, right? This is quite a few other videos out there that have some good uh, print preferences colors. So you know it's best to get a a color chart that way. You can fully maximize and there's probably more tweaking and adjustments you can do with this part right here so once you click ok you, you you're good click ok right right down here by directional printing this has always been check now if you're doing the sublimation check mirror if not heat transfer paper uncheck it once you do all that, do not click OK. You need to go to Add, Remove Presets. Just add it, right? Check it. Cassette 2, 1117, Portrait, High Quality Plain Paper, High, Color. All that's off. One copy. All that's off. Color Controls, Epson Vivid, 2.2, Edge Smooth and On. All this other good stuff. Right here is name, so you can put heat, transfer, paper, and if you're doing the sublimation with the paper tray and all, then you put sublimation, A sub, or whatever title you want to give it, so that way you recognize which is which. Then you click save right here. And then you have your heat transfer paper saved. So when you come to print, right, off the of Silhouette Studio, find your printer, click preferences. All you have to do is click on your preset. See how it changes? Paper tray, this is sublimation. You check over here, mirror image, all the good stuff. For me, I always double check everything. Sometimes I have click on a preset and some things was off. So this is my paper PPD. This one is actually has the border. Okay, the one we just did is borderless heat transfer paper. So I'm gonna be using this setting. Just click OK, print, and we're gonna see the results. Oh, just so you know. Okay, sorry about I did stop the camera just to adjust this right here. And this will be fast forward. This right here. Yo, there it is. This is actually borderless. Right, you see it comes straight out the printer. You see the little lines right there? Don't worry about it. Because once you once you heat press it onto the garment, you slice it up. gonna come completely different but 
that's it for the video. I hope this truly helps. Um, you know, a few people out there ask me a question: How do you can print borderless and add your your um, two designs? You know, just check out the other videos showing you how to do it. But that's all you add and print borderless, so you maximize everything. Okay, print and cut you can't do that. So we want to venture into that for the next upcoming video hopefully so, so thanks for watching y'all stay true and stay blessed catch you on the next video